everybody, how's it going? For today's presentation, let's take an up close and personal in depth look at the 2004 Cadillac CTS V. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the CTS V. We'll power it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Lamborghini Carolinas located in Greensboro, North Carolina for providing the CTS-V featured in today's in-depth review. For more information on the rest of their inventory, including exotic inventory, check the link in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now this exterior color is known as light platinum and is complemented nicely by a CTSV specific black leather interior with microfiber suede seating inserts. Directing the car is a hydraulic assist, speed proportional rack and pinion steering system specifically developed for the CTS-V. It's all routed through a sporty, three-spoke leather-wrapped multifunction steering wheel decorated by subtle touches of brushed aluminum, color accent stitching, and modest grip bolsters at 10 and 2. We'll talk more about performance later in the video, but initially the first generation CTS-V derived its V8 engine from the C5 Corvette Z06, in addition to borrowing the Corvette's gearbox as the sole transmission option, a Tremec T56 six-speed manual paired with a dual-mass flywheel for smoother operation, Getrag limited slip differential, 3.73 to 1 final drive, and a revised rear differential housing for increased strength and cooling abilities out back. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic projector xenon headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Both of the front windows are fully automatic, whereas the back windows are just automatic down. So, let's go and check out the exterior. The CTS was somewhat of an anomaly for Cadillac when it launched in 2003. A rear-wheel drive sedan developed and built in America and tested on Germany's famed Nürburgring, while having the option of a manual transmission. Unlike the Cavalier-derived Cimarron of the 80s and Opel-derived Katerra of the 90s, the CTS is widely recognized as the brand's first legitimate effort in creating a world-class sports sedan, far different from anything the brand had ever built in the past. CTS was the first Cadillac vehicle to debut an all-new design philosophy known as art and science, characterized by a stunning chiseled profile with sharp edges and crisp intersecting lines. With the development of the CTS-V, GM's performance division created the most powerful production Cadillac ever, a car that could legitimately compete against the steep German competition from BMW M and Mercedes AMG. The CTS rides on the then-new Sigma platform and was the first GM car to use ultra-high-strength steel in the chassis. 
It's lighter and stronger in addition to having superior safety profiles with better energy absorption and reduced intrusion in case of an accident. The heart of the CTSV though is its powertrain. Rather than using a higher output version of Cadillac's dual overhead cam Northstar V8, they borrowed the tried and true 5.7 liter LS6 overhead valve pushrod V8 from the Corvette Z06. Originally the CTS was only designed to incorporate a V6, therefore for packaging and cost reasons the LS6 was a more viable and powerful option at the time compared to the 4.6 liter Northstar. In eliminating excess noise, vibration, and harshness typically associated with the Corvette's application, Cadillac gave the CTS a stiffer engine cradle, revised engine mounts, and more. With an excellent starting platform, overall changes to the chassis itself were kept to a minimum, with most of the strengthening coming from revising and tuning of various chassis and suspension components. A steel strut tower brace spans the engine compartment, firming up the front and providing a more linear response with the retuned steering. Underneath, changes range from 27% stiffer spring rates, firmer dampers and bushings, Nivro mat self-leveling rear shocks, and larger diameter anti-roll bars, increasing by 3.6mm in front and 3mm in the rear. The hydroformed front and rear cradles are larger and reinforced even further. Underneath the front, there's a belly pan that helps aid in aerodynamics by reducing drag and high-speed lift, not to mention increased engine cooling. With the increased torque, both the drive shaft and CV joints are thicker and more durable. Compared to a standard six-cylinder CTS, the V gains about two to three hundred pounds of extra weight, with 62 pounds being from the larger engine and 60 pounds being from the more robust six-speed manual, giving it a slight increase in front-end weight bias to 54% over the front axle, compared to the V6's 52%. GM's Stabilitrack chassis control system, which was also borrowed from the Z06, includes four driver adjustable modes, including a track design competition mode that relaxes the car's governing systems, allowing the driver to explore the car's performance limits even further. Outside, styling upgrades were kept to a minimum. Initially only offered in silver or black with either ebony or light neutral interior colors, the design remains clean and simple. No spoilers, air scoops, or look at me cues. It's this application where I believe the art and science design philosophy really flourished. With an aggressive body stance, dynamic sheet metal, and high deck lid, it speaks for itself. But at the end of the day, the CTS-V is a Cadillac and not a Corvette. To the untrained eye, it can easily be mistaken for your run-of-the-mill CTS, that is, until you take a closer look at the details. The biggest difference up front is a beautiful stainless steel mesh grille, along with a more aggressive front fascia that not only incorporates a pronounced lower air splitter, but brake cooling ducts to either side below the driving lines. The rockers are more pronounced, while the rear fascia also gets its own special treatment finished off with twin polished exhaust tips. The only bit of badging is a subtle set of fender badges and a single deck lid badge. The CTS-V wears a unique set of 7-spoke, 6-lug polished cast aluminum wheels, measuring 18 by 8.5 inches at each corner and wrapped in 245-45 high-performance tires, tested to hold over 0.9G of lateral cornering forces. In order to handle the increased power, the V also gains a set of high-performing Brembo internally ventilated disc brakes, 14 by 1.3 inches in front and 14.4 by 1.1 inches in the rear with each being clamped down by four piston calibers. With this setup, the V stops from 60 miles an hour in an average of 120 feet. The CTS also carries a fully independent double wishbone suspension in front, utilizing aluminum control arms for less unsprung mass and an independent multi-link rear with coil springs and anti-roll bars. The steering rack, engine cradle, and front suspension are directly attached to the chassis, with the rear suspension being mounted on a rubber isolated subframe. Overall length is 191.5 inches with a width of 70.6 inches and a height of 57.3 inches, riding on a 115.2 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight is around 3,850 pounds with 54% over the front axle. So let's go and pop the hood. The CTS-V is powered by an LS6 all-aluminum 5.7 liter V8, the same overhead valve pushrod unit found in the C5 Corvette Z06. It's part of GM's Gen 3 small block architecture with a boring stroke of 3.9 and 3.62 inches respectively, port fuel injection, two valves per cylinder, and a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1. It develops an even 400 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 395 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM, 
down five in both horsepower and torque compared to the Z06. The engine redlines is 6,500 RPM. This translates to a 0 to 60 time in just under 5 seconds, 0 to 100 miles an hour in about 12 seconds, and quarter mile times around 13.4 seconds at 105 miles an hour. Top speed is drag limited to 163 miles an hour. In 2006, the LS6 gave way to the 6 liter LS2 V8 shared with the entry Corvette and Pontiac GTO. Overall power and torque didn't change, but torque peak was now available at 400 fewer RPMs than before. As far as fuel economy, the CTS has a 17.5 gallon tank capacity. While running on premium unleaded, EPA estimates range between 16 miles to a gallon in the city and 25 on the highway. While the overall interior design remains very similar to a fully loaded CTS, the V gains a host of updates and revisions that would be suitable for a performance vehicle, such as unique sports seats, a lower, more ergonomic center console to allow for easier shifting, in addition to a unique instrument cluster and special materials such as satin, chrome, and brushed aluminum. Build quality is decent overall, but it's not on the level of the V's closest German competition. The majority of the panels and touch points do feature plenty of soft touch materials, but it's more of a rubber type than supple leatherette. On the doors you'll find your power locks, windows and mirrors, in addition to two person memory for the driver's seat and trunk release down below next to a bit of storage. You'll also see plenty of art and science design elements throughout the interior that also made their way into other vehicles in the Cadillac fleet over the coming years. The seats feature full power adjustment with adjustable lumbar and heating function. The suede inserts and white double stitching add a premium yet sporty look, while the thick upper and lower bolsters provide a notable increase in lateral support. The cushions are soft and quite comfortable, the headrests are adjustable and the seat belts are fixed into the upper backrest. Of course, there's two airbags in front, but there's also side airbags for the front and curtain airbags both front and rear. There's unique aluminum V entry guards down below in the threshold, as well as a standard tilting steering wheel. Your trunk and parking brake release is located down below, and the dash that also features the rubberized soft touch material. A power sunroof represented the only available option. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. We have to shut her up. The CTS V came standard with a premium 8 speaker Bose audio system with in dash DVD based navigation system with CD changer, AM FM radio, and available satellite radio. Red bay pillar, side curtain airbags, as well as padded visors with three position garage home link. Your vanity mirrors are also illuminated. And you have a standard auto dimming movie mirror with your OnStar controls located right beneath. Up top, you have a microphone for your hands free telephone, interior lighting dimmer, as well as reading lamps, and your sunroof dial, where you can open and close it however far you want it. I thought the vents in these generation Cadillacs were pretty cool. It looks like they were borrowed from the Saab design used for many years. Continuing down the center stack, 
You have a standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control with your temperature adjustments to either side, fan speed, different zones in the bottom, recycling front and rear defrost, and two stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. You also have a little storage compartment down below with a 12 volt power outlet. Not much is going on in the center console, it's pretty simple overall, with two cup holders, a little change storage, and a padded armrest with storage located beneath. Now the infotainment system available for the CTSV was pretty advanced looking back in the day in my opinion. It's not a touchscreen unit, everything is controlled via the buttons to either side, and while it may look a little overwhelming at first, it's pretty simple once you actually activate the specific menu. So right now we're in our main menu where you have all of your different commands that you can also access over here such as radio, CD, navigation, and more. Address book, system setup, voice memos, vehicle information, and more about that in just a second. But you can also use the tune select button to scroll between the different options. So hitting the band button up top brings up your main radio screen where you can access your FM, AM, as well as XM stations. Preset stations off to the right hand side here activated via the buttons, and all of your song artist station information automatically shows up on the screen including your equalizers and more. Pressing disc automatically brings up your 6 disc CD changer if you have a disc currently in. Next, previous go between the different tracks, forward reversed, random track selection, as well as repeating tracks. Pretty simple. Hitting the audio button automatically brings up your equalizer as well as preset settings, navigation if the disc was currently in, system information, trip computer, fuel data, and more, as well as vehicle diagnostics, not to mention traffic if equipped. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the navigation multimedia system available in the 2004 Cadillac CTS. Like I said earlier, the sporty three-spoke steering wheel is accented in brushed aluminum with your driver information controls on the left and your cruise control off to the far right, intermittent wipers, and all of your lighting and turn signals. Using the little menu buttons, you can go through the vehicle diagnostic settings, bring up a lateral g-force meter, tire pressure monitoring system. In the speedometer, you can bring up your odometer, a digital speed readout, just the speed readout, or nothing. The gauges are also quite simple to read and are accented in satin silver with the V badging on the speedometer. Alrighty. We're gonna shut her down. And let's check out the back seat. The back seat of the CTSV also carries the unique design traits that you find in the front. The door panels are also wrapped in the soft rubberized material. While the seats are also wrapped in a combination of the black leather and microfiber suede. Climbing into the back seat of a first generation CTS really isn't too hard. The doors also close with a nice soft thud to them. And overall interior space, I'm about 5'10", 5'11", or so, and with a comfortable seating position for myself out the front, I probably have about two, two and a half inches of leg space and about an inch of headroom. Typically, vehicles that have sunroofs have a little bit of a dip-down headliner in the middle, just so the sunroof can store between the headliner and the roof. Luckily, towards the back where your heads typically sit, the headliner is cut out a little bit, giving you a lot more wiggle room back here, so it accommodates taller passengers a little bit better. People over six feet might be a little bit cramped in the CTS, but it's really up to you to kind of feel it out and sit in for yourself to see what you think. There's two storage nets on the back of the seats, a little cubby down below, as well as a 12 volt power outlet, grip handles, coat hooks, and two reading lamps located up top. Something else that I can appreciate is the fact that they included a padded armrest with two cup holders aiding in long-term comfort. And if you needed to, in a pinch, you could sit a third person in the middle. The headrests are adjustable and you do have side curtain airbags in the back. I would say backseat comfort for this particular class is excellent. The seats are a little bit on the firmer side, but the bottom cushion has a lot of give to it. There's also some nice lateral supports across the side keeping you hugged in, and a fantastic amount of lower back support which helps prevent fatigue on longer rides. Overall, definitely not bad. So let's check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Pop the trunk on the CTS and you'll find around 12.5 cubic feet of space overall. 
It's not too bad, it's nice and open, doesn't have any extra cubbies or anything like that, but it's a nice flat loading space. If you need a little bit of extra space, you can also fold down the rear seats in a 60-40 split fashion, so you can load cargo all the way up to the front. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments, including the extra power lumbar that you find on the driver's seat. The glove box is also locking and has a modest amount of space in lined and felt. The first generation CTS and CTS-V were groundbreaking vehicles for Cadillac, ramping up their performance images and broadening appeal to a much wider crowd. Finding these in mint shape is a hard task these days, but it's such a pleasure taking an in-depth look at a car that revolutionized a brand and image. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the first generation 2004 Cadillac CTS-V. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.